and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the patch to 11 live reaction. We have been discussing this quite a bit. What is going to happen with this patch? We're all expecting big things to happen. We're all super, super excited. Um, and so this is going to be fascinating to see what actually happens with patch to 11. The notes are out. They just came out here this minute. Haven't looked at this at all. I have no idea what is going to be happening with this patch. So this is the live reaction <laughs> video. Um, Y'all, yeah, you and I are going to be uh, seeing what happens here together here with Twitch chat. Um, <laughs> Lorenzo says, I'm scared. Uh, yeah. So, all right, let's see. So what's going to change with Legends of Runeterra? All right, first we have the new expansion, Rise of the Underworld coming in. They did just preview Echo about an hour ago. Echo looks really good. All three of the new champions all look really good, in my opinion. I think that we are uh, in for um, some really powerful cards coming with this Rise of the Underworld expansion. Should be um, uh, changing things up a good amount anyway, just from the new expansion. We have 43 new cards. Okay, but uh, new keyword lurk. But this that's all going to be exciting and everything. That's definitely... A, exciting but the change the new changes to the cards which i'm i'm assuming we're gonna have some card yeah here we go card updates that's what i'm really looking forward to that's why i can't wait to see okay so let's see card updates kind of going down targeting the top yada 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 so i, I won't read through all of this um you know completely if you know if y'all want to read through it you can i'll probably read through it you know afterwards but i won't just like sit here and read for the the youtube video and everything um, but of course, y'all can just pause and read whatever, you know, what you want. But I want to see what's going to actually happen. Um, all right. So then we have several new releases of new cards coming up. So 212, the summer event release, looks like there's maybe going to be new cards there. Also, um, do, 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 do. All right. Here we go. First card, Misfortune. Misfortune gets the overwhelm again okay they're they're putting overwhelm back on level two misfortune they level two misfortune had overwhelm they got rid of it and it looks like they're like you know what people aren't really playing misfortune these days so let's give misfortune overwhelm again and i guess i'm fine with that you know like it with you know like it yeah i guess i'm fine with that i think misfortune is just a cool card and and everything and people don't play that much bilge water right now and um yeah all right i'm yeah, I think that's that's perfectly fine. You know, to have misfortune with overwhelm. That's the thing is, if if misfortune starts dominating again and is like everywhere, you can get rid of the overwhelm. <laughs> you know, you can you can you know you can take it back. So, I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah, like let's switch things up. All right, we got Jarvan level f or Jarvan four. I almost said Jarvan level four. All right, so level one Jarvan. What what are we changing here? Allies have survived three plus strikes. Okay, it's going to be easier to level up Jarvan. Leveled up Jarvan, making the Cataclysm every round is really powerful. So making it easier to level up Jarvan is definitely going to increase the power of Jarvan because that level 2 Jarvan is so good being able to challenge everything. So that's that's a good Jarvan buff. All right, so we got a Misfortune buff and a Jarvan buff so far. I'm, I'm in there, right? Like, I, I just want to have a lot of things change and a lot of things uh, switch up with, like, the metagame and everything. So, so far, so good. I'm, I'm in there. I, I like them. What else we got? Oh, Trinomir is buffed. What do we got? Change Overwhelm Fearsome, Overwhelm Fearsome Tough. Whoa. Okay. So I was thinking like, I was also, I was, whenever I made like, so as you'll probably know, if you, if you notice, I had to patch 211 uh, cards to nerf, cards to buff um, video. And I was, I wanted to put Trindomir on there as far as the cards to buff, but I didn't really know exactly how to do it. My thought was maybe make Trindomir just like an 8, an 8-8. Eight, eight. And so, like, you know, it's an 8-8 eight, eight to start with for 8. And then, you know, when it levels up, it's the 9-9. Nine, nine. And I thought that could maybe be a thing to do. But it looks like they're just going to give um, uh, give Trindomir some some extra keywords. And it looks like it's only on the level 2. Okay, so only... So, I guess level 1 Trindomir is the same. Level 2 Trindomir, you know how f level 2 Trindomir gains Fearsome? It looks like it's not only going to gain Fearsome, but also gain Tough as well. So your level 2 Trindomir will be a 9-9 Overwhelm Fearsome Tough. Okay. I don't think that's going to move the me the needle too much on Trindomir, but I'm I'm for it. Because I think that, um, you know, Trindomir just doesn't see very much play. There's so many easy ways to kind of deal with it, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, sure, give it, a, give it an extra keyword for level 2. Might as well. Might as well. All right, Karma... 
Oh, they're putting Karma back down to five mana. Okay, Karma at five mana was really good before. They're putting Karma back down to five mana. Might as well. I think a six mana. It's this is a card. This is a difficult card to balance because I think at five mana before it was really good. At six mana, it just wasn't good enough, right? So like it, you know, it's hard to kind of balance the two. Now, while I said that at five mana, Karma was really good, that was about a year ago, and we've had a lot of new cards and a lot of powerful cards enter into the metagame since then, right? Like we've had, you know, Bilgewater and Targon and Sharima and all sorts of new stuff that they have increased just the power level of cards just over time with adding new stuff. We're also going to have this new expansion. So Karma going back down to five mana while it was um, a very dominating end game back then there are so much more powerful end game stuff these days with celestials and all you know all sorts of stuff so um and cythria and watcher and all this stuff so i i don't think that karma at five mana will be too oppressive or anything like that i think that's a, that's a good change let's let's see how five mana karma now looks in the newer updated um metagame so cool all right so far so good we're just buffing up some the the weakest champions misfortune's not really on that list but some of the other champions. Aurelia. Okay, they're changing Aurelia. What do we have? Has to be 14 allies have attacked now? Yo, that is difficult. So, oh man, they're making it so like you really... See, I don't like this change. I know some people may... Um, I don't like this change. The reason why is because um, while it's a nerf for Aurelia's ear, right? And that, that's the thing. Aurelia's ear is too good of a deck. But the, my, my thing with Aurelia is... While it's it's great with with Azir and everything, I want to be able to play Aurelia without Azir, right? And I feel like this change, making it so you have to have 14 plus allies have attacked, is going to really make it difficult to play Aurelia without Sand Soldiers. Um, that that's my feeling, and um, so I want to I want to have it. I don't know. I don't have like a great um, suggestion, but I want to somehow make it where Aurelia is worse with Azir. And so, like, Aurelia Zier just overall as a deck is not as good. But yet, you could still play Aurelia with other champions. You know, maybe play Aurelia with Misfortune or something like that. But having to have 14 allies attack, that's going to be pretty tough. Now, I expect something has to happen with Azir, right? Azir is only 10 allies summoned, and now you're making this 14 allies attack? <laughs> that that That's a completely different numbers and everything. That's, that's real weird. So, yeah, I feel like maybe something's going to happen with Azir. But anyway... Um, all right, so that's, that is a nerf to Aurelia Zero, of course. All right, ooh, they're changing something with Riven. Riven's already very good. Um, when I'm summoned, if you have the attack token or when you gain the attack token, Reforge. I like that a whole lot. So they're basically like, because you know how you had to like play Riven and then yet usually you want to play Riven on your, uh, like the opponent's round because then you had to wait till your round before you reforge. Now it's just if you have the attack token, kind of like Aurelia, if you have the attack token, go ahead and reforge once right away. I think that's a good change. So you, like when you can, if you have the attack token round three and you play Riven on round three, you get that uh, reforge immediately. I like that change quite a bit. That's a, that's a good buff right there. Heimer! Oh, they're buffing up Heimer. Heimer going to a 2-4 instead of a 1-3. I like it. Heimer is really fun to play. Um, I play a lot of Heimer. I, I don't play against very much Heimer, but I do play a lot of Heimer, and I think that Heimer is strong. I, yeah, I, I've had a lot of success with Heimer, so I like Heimer going to a 2-4. Um, we'll see if more other people kind of discover how good Heimer is with getting free turrets all the time. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna that's just going to help out Heimer. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Looks like Heimer Karma looking a little better now. Hecarim buff. Yeah, man, we're changing a ton. They're just changing all these champions. Like basically every, you know, all these champions that these old school champions that people don't play very much anymore are all getting buffed. Hecarim turning into a 5-6. Okay, adding an, an additional health on to Hecarim. So now Hecarim doesn't get blocked profitably by all the five mana cards anymore um yeah i mean that's a real good buff for hecarim too you know like this is we're just increasing the power level of the game overall it looks like um looks like that's kind of the uh the thing here with just all the champions let's just increase the power level of every champion that's what it seems like so far um all right cool you know that sounds good to me 
Azir, all right, here we go. Yep, so you've summoned 13 units. Yeah, so I, I, that's what I was going to say. Like, they're going to definitely have to change that Azir level up if they're changing the Aurelia level up. And looks like that's what they're doing. So they're just turning it into 13 instead of 10. Um, still keeping a 1-5, keeping everything else the same, looks like. But just changing it to, to 13. So hurts a little bit. You know, that is 30% more allies, right? But it should still be fairly easy to level up Azir. Nasus getting rid of fearsome on level one level two and three still have fearsome so that's what they're doing i was saying you know my change that i would have done is just get rid of the spell shield but looks like the level one Nasus they're getting rid of the fearsome that does mean you're able to throw small things in front of Nasus easier especially like if a thresh is putting a Nasus into play attacking but that doesn't that honestly doesn't really change the card at all because once this thing you know when this thing's a 10 10 it doesn't really matter if it has Fearsome or not, especially the level 1. The level 2 having the Fearsome is much more impactful because the level 2 with the minus 1, minus 0 to all your units, and then that also having Fearsome, that's where it gets really hard to, to block Nasus because then you have to have, like, you know, 4 plus power things try to block the Nasus. So I kind of wish that they got rid of the Fearsome altogether from the card if they're going to get rid of it from the level 1 because it's really the level 2 where you get real... That's where you get, like, the, the huge pressure on on it so i don't think this real this really isn't a, that much of a nerf if a nerf at all to this card um the, the level one nasus when it's a you know a 10 10 whether you have to block with a 3 3 or a 1 1 that's not really any kind of big deal this really this isn't much of a change to the card i that's i kind of wish they got rid of the fearsome altogether if if they're going to get rid of it from the level one champion i kind of wish it was gone from the level two and three as well but I guess it'll make it a little easier to, yeah, block glimpse or block and kill your own blocker, I guess. It's not much of a consolation prize. <laughs> that's that's not much that's not much help, to be honest. That's that's really not much of a nerf. Sivir? Okay, just make it a little easier for Sivir to level up. Perfectly fine with me. I think Sivir is a really good champion, and I think that um you know, we've been playing a lot of Sivir recently, having a lot of success with Sivir. I think that the 5-3 the quick attack, the spell shield, this this champion is really tough to block with that large body quick attack. And the spell shield is really hard to get rid of. I think Sivir is awesome. And it's now easier to level up. It's now going to be even better. I think Sivir is one of, the, one of the better champions in the game already. I thought that. And now with this, it's easier to level up. It's just going to make it even better. So, um, yeah, Sivir, Sivir looking real good now. Okay, so Talia is just going to do deal two. So now new Talia level two is changing the attack. Deal two to my blocker three times. If it's dead or gone, deal two to the enemy nexus instead. Okay, so now it, it doesn't have to have the landmark, right? So before it only dealt one. Or no, no, it repeated it twice if you had a landmark. Now you just don't, you don't have to have that landmark. It, it just does it the three times. And I think that's per, a perfectly fine change. I think that was kind of wordy and unnecessary to have to have the landmark for the extra two that's that's perfectly fine to have talia do it all the time that's a good change that's a that's a good change it, it it's less wordy it's less confusing it yeah that's just a, that's a good change yeah i do think Talia's in a pretty good spot now Tarek buff i i love playing me some Tarek decks i am all for this Tarek buff all right we get an extra point of health I like it. 3-5 Tarek is now going to be the same size as Shen. So very, you know, so it's going to be attacking like Shen and blocking like Shen. That is awesome. I I love it. Yeah, Tarek. <laughs> Tarek's awesome. And yeah, Tarek buff. That's big. That's big. Tarek buff. I, I like this. This is one of my favorite ones so far that we did. Aphelios going back to the 3-3. I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I actually talked about that in like a reply on, on YouTube. Um, and everything that, uh, you know, fellows can go back to 3-3, three, three, um, especially because they got rid of the health buff from the temple, right? Like, that was the thing, like, with the temple buffing up the health with the Aphelios uh, before. Now that's gone. I think that 3-3 three, three Aphelios makes a lot of sense. And, um, and you know, with the three mana moon weapons and everything, I think that's just, that also makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, they're changing a lot of cards here. Changing a lot of cards. Okay, so I guess maybe that's just the champions. Now we got follower spells and landmarks. 
Miss make it rain going back down to two mana. Whoa, that's big. That's a big deal. You know, make it rain going back down to two mana. That's gonna really help out bilge water quite a bit. Help out your twisted fates and everything. Um, yeah, that's that's a big deal for for your bilge water decks because that was I think that was a big card that really hurt Bilgewater having Mega Rain go from two to three mana. I think that's where we kind of started seeing a lot less Bilgewater running around. Um, so yeah, that'll be that'll be pretty interesting. Yeah, looks like uh, may have may be in for a lot more Bilgewater again. Whoa, Black Market Merchant going back to two two. Yeah, they're they're helping out Twisted Fate quite a bit. Black Market Merchant going back to two two. I don't know if this one was really that necessary to be honest. I I don't think that there's, I, I don't think that Black Market Merchant being a two one or a two two has really moved the needle very much. I think that there, I think that making make it rain cost two mana instead of three is a big deal in the playability of you know make it rain. Having Black Market Merchant be a 2-1 or a 2-2, I don't think really changes the... I don't think that really moves the needle on the playability of Black Market Merchant. Um, especially with experiencing, you know, playing 2-1 Black Market Merchants. I think that's perfectly fine. So 2-2, also perfectly fine. I, I don't think there's really that much of a difference um, with this. This is probably going to be the... Besides, the Trindamir buff isn't really going to change Trindamir. This buff isn't going to really change Black Market Merchant, but... Might as well, I guess. Double up, five mana. Okay, double up's a fun card. Um, this is a card we've we've played a decent amount. This is a um, a pretty cool card, and and yeah, give Bilgewater is now getting good removal, right? Like Bilgewater is now looking pretty good. They got the um, uh, Pike's Champion spell. That that card, that card's good. Bone Skewer, and um, uh. Man, I, I can't think of card names. And then Monster Harpoon. Monster Harpoon. Monster Harpoon I, has been really performing well. Um, but now you got Double Up there at 5 mana. That could be another cool one. Another one dealing Nexus damage. Yeah, might as well. I like it. Slotbot. What do we got here for Slotbot? See, you can tell they're really targeting Bilgewater. Or maybe they're really targeting everything. And Bilgewater is just the first region that we're seeing. When I'm summoned or round start, grant me plus zero, plus one for each card you drew last round, then shuffle my stats. Wow, that's a big buff to slot bot. That's a huge buff. Sorry. So now, um, because it's now it's a summon ability also. So it says that slot bot's a a one four, but at minimum, slot bot is always a one five now. That then gets the the um the stats shuffled so at minimum it's six because uh, you know at minimum you drew one card the round before um you know it's six and then that but that's that's also kind of nice where because you know like a slot bot you always had to like play your slot bot first and then try to draw a whole lot of cards you can do the like bilge water draw a lot of cards you know like with your you know your one mana one two that draws like the one fleeting card and you know do all your draw stuff and then that next round, you spend all of your mana drawing cards and stuff like that. And then the next round, you like, like, let's say you do that round five. You draw a bunch of cards with, you know, like a salvage and, you know, just, or just whatever you want to have. You know, you rummage, you know, you have like your rummage stuff that's strong cards. So you draw like five cards on that round. Then the next round, round six, you, you drop two slot bots. And then suddenly both slot bots are going to be absolutely huge because both slot bots are going to see all the cards you just drew. Um, wow. And then, uh, the previous round and yeah, so that, that's honestly a really big buff. Like this is, this is really changes the game for slot bot. Um, yeah, like that really does. I think that's going to be like, cause that's a big thing. Like I've played it, you know, a good amount of slot bot decks. And there's a lot of times like where you'll have slot bot in your hand and you've been needing to play like other stuff to keep your opponent from killing you and all that kind of stuff. And like the slot bot in your hand, it shows like how many cards you drew the last round. And it says like four on it, right? Because you drew four cards last round. Now you can you can do that and, and do all that kind of stuff. And then boom, drop your slot bot. Or also a lot of times like you'll, you'll do all your card draw stuff and you'll draw into your slot bots, right? And then you're like, okay, well now I just spent all my rummages and salvage or, you know, whatever. You did your card draw stuff and you drew your slot bot because of course you were drawing cards. And then you play slot bot, and then you have to like wait and hopefully draw a bunch of cards again. And that's like really slow. But now you draw your slot bot after you know you're doing all your card draw stuff because you're drawing your cards. And then you get to play your slot bot and immediately get all the bonus from the cards you drew the previous round. 
it's going to make this a really good three drop. It is like this is a good card now. Like, this is that that changes a lot for this card. All right, we have confront is now going to two mana. I think that's just a, a good change, I guess. I don't know. I honestly maybe that's not a good change. <laughs> Shivana is already great. I don't know if Shivana needs this buff because you're still not playing confront in any deck at all. So all this is is just a buff to Shivana's champion spell, right? Because we're not we're not like actually putting this card in any deck even at two mana. So it's just like a little minor buff to Shivana's champion spell. But is that necessary? Probably not. <laughs> Shivana's already a great card. But am I mad at it? No, it's fine. You know, it's it's fine, I guess. But it's also kind of not necessary. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Ooh, the Mage Seekers. What do we got? Mage Seeker turns into a 4-4? Okay, so it's a 4-mana 4-4 four four that gets plus 2, plus 2 to turn into a 6-6. Six six. That's a good little buff for it. It's is it not going to move the needle that much, but there are definitely decks and definitely times I want to play Mage Seeker in Scyther, and this just helps that out a little bit. And I think a four mana four four for this card makes a lot of sense when you've seen the new um, Bilgewater and Targon four mana four fours that have been printed, whether they're sea monsters or dragons or you know whatever. Um, I think that this could definitely be the four mana four four as well, and I think that works pretty well. So yep, good good buff there. Laurent Bladekeeper going to a 3-3. I also think that makes perfect sense at 4 mana. You know, the 2-3 body was a little underwhelming. Might as well make it a 3-3. I think that, yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. And and I've definitely played Bladekeeper in competitive decks before. I, it, this is a card that, like, curves after Fiora really well, for example. Um, and I think this makes this a little bit more playable. And I like it. So now you got 5-5 five, five, five worth of stats for 4 on, on the two bodies. And, you know, you get to buff up a champion. I like it. Whoa, Howling Abyss costs six? Yo, that's just not even fair. Yo, this that is this is like the buff for me, right? I I love playing Howling Abyss decks. I play Howling Abyss all the time. We played Howling Abyss in the seasonal tournament. Now you're telling me it costs six? Yo, this card's already amazing. And now it only costs six mana? Yo, this is the best card in the game. <laughs> this is the best card in the game right here. Howling Abyss, six mana. Wow. Wow, man, might as well just cost, have it cost like nothing. <laughs> this is this is incredible. Getting Howling Abyss at six mana. Whoa, that is crazy, man. I oh man, now you get to curve Siphoning Strike into Howling Abyss, but now all you have to do is have your because uh, there's a lot of times like where you'll have your uh, the tar like the Targon two three. Whatever that card's called, that whenever it dies, you get the mana gem. So you just have to have that thing die on round four. Very easy to have that thing die on round four. And then you get the extra mana gem round five. So then you get to six mana on round five. And now you got your, your Howling Abyss round five that you're playing it. Wow. Yeah, we need Howling Abyss Spotlight Night, huh? Dude, Howling Abyss is sweet. Man, that's incredible. Wow. All right, Ren Shadowblade. What do we got? A 4-3 instead of a 3-3? Three, three? Sure. I guess. <laughs> it does I you know, it helps the card out, you know, and uh yeah, it's it's perfectly fine. I think it was good at 3-3. Three, three. I think it's still good at 4-3. Again, helps the card out, I suppose. Um yeah, might as well. It doesn't move the needle too much on the card. Uh, I think it's still like I think it was playable before. I think I think this was a card that was underplayed due to how ev like compared to how good it was, I think people just didn't play Ren Shadow Blade enough. And now that's a 4-3, it's still good, probably going to be not played enough compared to how good it is. But maybe people will just kind of see this and see, okay, let's play some more Ren Shadow Blade. And we'll realize that it, hey, wait a minute, this is actually a, a good card. This is a this is a really good card. So, yeah, I think I think this is a good card. Blue Sentinel, yeah, that was the card for Howling Abyss. Man, Howling Abyss at 6 mana is broken. Dancing Droplet, got rid of the Attune. I think that makes a lot of sense. Dancing Droplet... Was a card I definitely underrated whenever um, it was previewed and everything, but that attune mana to go along with the recall and everything, you know, everything else that it does, that that attune mana was so good because it basically costs zero mana to pit, to play droplet. So having a draw engine like this, that's also you know loose of body, everything it does, it should probably cost a mana. You know, like it, I think that it costing essentially zero mana with the attune was a little obnoxious 
and then you we saw that you know play out with Aurelia um, having that extra mana for Aurelia's champion spell a lot of times because of the droplet and everything like that. I, I think that that's um, I think that's a good change. You think they could have got rid of the elusive instead? Definitely could have, but I think that the dancing droplet, just flavor wise and everything, I think that having this card have elusive more than having a tune makes more sense. Green Glade Lookout turning into a 2 2. Okay. Okay. This is a fun card. Like, this is a, this is a card that increases the fun in the game you know overall uh yeah so i i uh this is a positive card to have and so yeah have it strike reduce the cost of something you do like some crazy stuff with it make it a 2-2 i like it i like it if y'all remember it was originally a 1-1 one -one. and it was a 1-1 one -one for a while and then they changed it to a 2-1 because they're like come on this card's fun play this card let's make it a 2-1 and people are still like nah and now they're like come on this card's fun play this card make it a 2-2 and so we'll see if, if anybody plays the card. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun card. I like it. Yay, Young Witch! Turning into a 1-2. That's a good way to help buff Lulu. Um, you know, get make it so, like, Young Witch doesn't die all the time, right? Because that's that's the thing about Young Witch... Or, sorry, about Lulu is, you know, like, the different support things that you have all die very, very easily. So Young Witch turning into a 1-2. That's definitely going to be a good buff for Lulu. Because, you know, Lulu needs some... Needs a unit in play whenever you play your Lulu on round three. And, you know, you got to be pretty aggressive with Lulu. Because Lulu doesn't really affect the board that well on, you know, round six, seven, eight. You know, you got so you got to be aggressive with it. So you need units alive. And this will just help Young Witch stay alive just a little bit. I think that's a good change. Will of Ionia back to four mana. This is one that I, I didn't think really need to... If y'all are longtime viewers of the channel... Y'all know that I, I didn't like the Will of Ionia going to 5 mana a long time ago. Um, and now that they've printed Homecoming at 4 mana, um, you know, and we've seen, like, the power of Homecoming with Dancing Droplet and everything, um, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with this. I think that, uh, you know, because I was, I was worried with Will of Ionia going to 5 mana, that'd be, you know, too easy to have. Um, I don't know. There just wasn't, like, the interaction for, like, large units and stuff like that. Um, this is a big, big change though. Like this really is like this, this makes Ionia a lot better. Now you have the Karma, um, you have this change. Ionia looking good with both of those changes and just like the different control cards that we've seen buffed, like control, they're really helping out the control archetypes, right? Heimerdinger, Karma, um, Ophelios, all of those, like they're really helping out control right now. That's what it's looking like. The make it rain. Well, they did. They put Twin Disciplines at two mana. Wow, this is a card that I still felt was good at three mana, and I thought this has been really underplayed. And I've played this quite a bit at three mana. At two mana, this card is insane. Plus zero, plus three for two mana. This card is so good at two mana. This is you know now Sharp Sight Troll Chant power level at two mana. Um, yeah, this is going to be a three of in every single Ionia deck now. You know, so that's you just you just how you start with three sharp sights, you start with three troll chants, you now start with three twin disciplines. Um, this is huge for Ionia. This is huge for Lulu, for Yasuo, for you know anything like that. For Car even just protecting Karma at two mana, this is going to be one of the most impactful changes out of any of these changes that we've seen so far. Um, maybe the most impactful so far. Like this is a a huge huge change from two to three mana. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, this is a big change. And, um, yeah, Ionia looking good, looking good. Okay, they did. They changed Incisive Tactician to to be a 5-5. Five five. We talked about that. That was one of our, our ones that we talked about as, like, a card to buff. Now, people are a little worried that, you know, it's a summon effect with Rally. And so, therefore, if you have your leveled up LeBlanc, and leveled up LeBlanc creates the... Um, oh, whatever. Mirror image. That's what's called. It creates the mirror image after you deal 15 damage with a leveled up LeBlanc. Then you can have that mirror image copy your incisive tactician and you get to rally again. 
So some people are saying, man, that, that could be too good. And that's why the incisive tactician was for power. What I kind of say to that is we're already talking about a super expensive card, incisive tactician that you have to cast and you have to have your, your five, two champion deal, deal 15 or see 15 damage to level up. And then it has to see another 15 damage to get to the mirror image. And then it's a slow speed spell for mirror image to copy this. And that has to happen. It's like, if you get all those things to happen, then you get to rally. It's like, yeah, that's, I don't, I don't see that being too good. <laughs> I feel like that's how it should be. If you get all of that, all of that stuff to, to happen. Um, and so, you know, you do have the potential of, uh, copy this to rally, attack with a bunch of stuff, do 15 damage again, create another mirror image, play mirror image on this rally again. And you could have a whole lot of mirror image rallies and, you know, kill your opponent. But I mean, like I said, like, it's like, what, what it, <laughs> As an opponent, what are you doing to, to die to that? Have you just like not played anything like the whole game? You have no no interaction, no removal, no blockers, no nothing. You know, like yeah. So I, I think that's perfectly fine. So that's cool. It it could be if if it turns out it's too good, they can change this to play rally to get rid of that combo. But I think this just being a five five makes so much more sense. Plus, um, the card bloody business, which of course is the card that like you need your five plus power ally to strike something else. That bloody business has the incisive tactician on the art, and the fact that my poor incisive tactician couldn't use his own card, his own bloody business, um, because it was a four or five, that's just kind of sad, right? So now my boy incisive tactician can use his own card and uh, use that as a removal spell. So I'm happy about that. City Breaker, I have always loved City Breaker. That's another one that if y'all are big time watchers of the stream, you know that. City Breaker is a really fun card to play. Just sit back. Watch them burn, do the damage every every round, play some defense, keep doing Nexus damage. This is a cool card. Turn this into a 1-5, I'm I'm all for that. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh I I I'm for um, you know, incentivizing people to play some more city breakers and for me to play some more city breakers. I like it. Good change. Whoa, buffing up Jay Madarda. Okay. Wasn't wasn't really exactly expecting that one, but Again, Jay Medard is a really fun card to play. It's great with like gems and things like that. Um, yeah, I, I've definitely played a good amount of Jay Medarda and gems, and now buffing up to a five-five, let's do it. I think that's that's perfectly fine. I think that's a good a good change. And again, this is a card that adds that it's a fun card to play. Um, that just is a, a positive card and everything promotes fun gameplay. And you know, if we're gonna buff up those kind of cards, like yeah, these are buffing up cards that promote fun gameplay. Um, so I like it. Middenstoke Hedgeman. Again, another card that promotes fun gameplay. Get this thing to a 5-4. Perfect. I love it. That's Again, that that's a really good change. I like it. Rummage costs 2 mana now. I, I actually like this change. I've kind of felt that Rummage is kind of busted. and I don't know. I guess I don't play the most Rummage decks or anything like that. But yeah, this, this kind of makes more sense as a 2 mana spell for 2 mana draw 2. Um, yeah. They have it worded, you know, discard up to two cards. You draw one for each card you discarded. I don't know if... So how it's worded, it says discard up to two cards. Does that mean... Is that like a change in the wording where, like, if you want, you can only... You can discard one card and draw one with Rummage now? You know, like, if you have, like, six cards in hand, but you just want to discard one and draw one, are you able to do that now? I'm... um. Before, you know, you always had to, it was, it was worded where like, you know, it was discard two, draw two, but if you only had one in hand, you could discard one. If you only had like one extra card in hand, you could discard one and draw one. I don't know. I don't know if that's like actually changed the wording or not. Um. Okay. So they put the tribeam and private layer to five mana. That was, that's a change that I've been talking about. So they didn't do like my cool turret change that I was talking about, but I did talk about how like this card costing five just kind of makes more sense than it costing four. When you look at the, uh, different removal spells in the game, um, and the, and like the ability of what this card does, I don't think that this makes this card unplayable. I think this is still, you know, a three of and Draven as real and still very good and, and all that kind of stuff. But I think it just kind of makes more sense at five mana than at four mana, but it's still going to be a great card. Good change there. Oh, no. I'm kind of scared for this. All right. So what do they do to the Watcher? Hopefully, it's actually a good nerf. Hopefully. All right. So what, what is this nerf? Okay. So Watcher, I cost zero if you summoned five plus allies that cost eight this game. Okay. 
So it, it's got instead of four it goes to five. It still has the attack obliterate where you can't affect it. Um, leave, but now it leaves three non-champion. So it does leave three cards. So you don't just lose immediately with the Watcher. It's not just complete game over. So it does leave three cards. They're non-champions, of course, so you don't just get like champion spells and all that kind of stuff. Um, these, this is definitely a good change, okay? So can't complain too much about it. This is a good change. But I don't know if it's... I guess it's enough. I don't know. I wish you could like still. I wish you could still make that attack like a skill or something. Or as y'all know, I I liked having the ability be a nexus strike. That's what I wanted to see. Um, it's still great. It's still awesome. Um, it's not that difficult to get five plus allies that cost eight plus. It's a little bit more difficult than four, of course, a little bit, but it's really not very difficult. Um. And you know how that how that deck. We'll see if something happens. With, I I hope this isn't much of a change. I really hope there's something else that's changing with Lissandra. But I guess they've already gone through the champions. I really hope something's changing with Spectral Matron. Then we'll have to see. You know, like we're still going going through. I, I hope there's something with Spectral Matron. We haven't done Shadow Isles cards yet, so because this is still very easy to pull off and everything. And I'm I'm very scared that Trundle Lissandra. Like so far, this is the only thing that we've seen with the Lissandra Trundle deck and that Lissandra Trundle deck is definitely meta warping it's really really good and so we'll see if anything else is happening with that deck i sure hope there's something else because otherwise this change alone is not going to with the other changes we've had to the other decks lissandro watcher uh lissandro trundle is still looking like a tier one deck especially if people are going to be playing more slower control decks like your heimer Ophelios, uh karma that kind of stuff this is still going to be dominant um I don't know. Arose, what are you talking about? I don't know. So we'll see if anything changes like besides that. All right, uh Rasa moves up to an 8-6 instead of a 7-5. Might as well. Um you know, Rasa used to be all over the place. Um, okay, so I guess, so he's saying, okay, somebody in chat was saying that because it's five plus, that if you only simply have one Spectral Matron put in a Watcher, like if, if you have, if you have exactly two allies so far, and then you have one Spectral Matron put in a Watcher, and that goes to exactly four then you wouldn't be able to have your other watcher cost zero at that point to then put into play at zero mana. And, and that is that is true, if if that's the case. If you, if you have exactly two and then matron. Because again, so yeah, five is a little bit more difficult than four. Um, yeah, so that, that exact play pattern would change. Um, <laughs> puppy is happy. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Rasa the Sunder. Um, yeah, this this is a good change, I guess. You know, like I don't I don't know if I don't even know if this is really that good of a change. It's not a bad change. It's just I don't think there's any difference in this card whether it's a seven five or an eight six. I think it's the exact same card. <laughs> so this is just kind of a change to have a change more than a change that that does anything. Um, you know, whether or not Rasa will be good at seven five and eight, you know, it will be the exact same if Ross is good at eight six. Um, so yeah, that that really just doesn't change the card at all. Um, Dusk Rider turning into a 3-5. So this is just going to be a good buff to... Really, Dusk Rider turning into a 3-5. I don't think that that means that, okay, now we're going to start putting Dusk Rider into our decks. But that is a, a buff to Unspeakable Horror and anything else that makes random Nightfall cards. Um, you know, that's just a buff to those cards, basically. Ooh, they did change... They changed Escape to Abomination. Okay, change that to a 4-2. That that's yeah okay I could see that for two mana getting a four two kind of makes sense over a four three right like a four three body is like real big for three mana um, which there are four threes at three mana merciless hunter as we know um, but okay you know they want to hit thresh nasus somehow right now there hasn't been any nerfs to thresh nasus whatsoever because I don't really consider that that nerf to nasus a nerf whatsoever um, so okay now this is the this is the first hit to thresh nasus. 
change, changing that to be a four, two makes it easier to block, right? You have like your, your, you know, one and two mana cards, a two power. They can, you know, a lot of times, like think how many times, like we've had like a two, one or a two, two in play and they, they do the, um, curse keeper plus ravenous butcher combo. And you have to block the ravenous butcher cause it's a three, two cause you actually trade with the three, two. Well, now you can, uh, you can block the escaped abomination, the four, two, cause you can trade with that. And then you just take the hit from the three, two. That that's a, that's going to be a big change. Whoa, Stalking Shadows going to three mana. I wasn't expecting this. Um, Stalking Shadows is a great card. I wasn't expecting this to go to three mana, but um, that is a great card. Uh, it's not, I guess it's, yeah, that's a surprising change. That's a surprising one. I wasn't really expecting that nerf. Um, but I, I can see it. I can understand it. Because it, it is, it does, If it has the card selection to it. It's the card advantage. It's a two mana draw two. That you know that also gives you card selection. It's really powerful, right? Like there's, like all the other two mana draw twos all have like downsides or you know things like that to it. Like this was just an immediate burst speed two spell mana draw two. Um, yeah, that was, yeah. So that that kind of makes sense. It does. I wasn't really expecting it. Uh, one person, Chad Cog is is uh, already predicting they're going to be reverting that. I don't know. I could see. Yeah, that's that's uh. <laughs> Agent Iowa says, "Take that, Lab of Legends mysteries." <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh. Okay, Shadow Isles does just have a lot of card advantage. You know, having this and Glimpse Beyond, um, you know, so that's gonna hurt your like Doom Beast decks. That's gonna really hurt like your Nightfall decks. Like this is a, a big hurt to Nightfall, kind of more than anything else, really. The clock hand, whoa, that's a big buff. You know, that's a that's a big stat change going from four seven to seven seven. Oh man, I'm kind of worried about these Lissandra decks. If you know, Watcher didn't really change that much. Lissandra, they didn't change at all. They they made Talia even better. Lissandra Talia is a deck that I think is one of the, the best decks in the format already, and it's just getting buffs, basically, I guess besides a little bit of a watcher nerf. Alright, so clock hand. Definitely gonna make that that a lot better thrall decks getting a, a big upgrade so you're going to really need to play more cards that deal with um deal with landmarks it looks like because yeah the thrall decks looking good especially if there's going to be more control decks also um yeah thrall decks looking good yeah turbo thralls buff raz blood main turning into a seven seven from a six six again this doesn't change the card at all. <laughs> Just like the, um, what was the other one? Uh, the Rasa one. Like Rasa at eight, six, and seven, five is the exact same card. Rasa or, or Raz, sorry, at seven, seven, and six, six is really the exact same card. Obviously, it's not quite the exact same, but basically is. Like this doesn't really change the card. Um, yeah. So it's still like it's a you know cool little card and everything. Doesn't really change. Doesn't really change the card. Raz, Raz is also like this is a card that's like fun to play and and you know like fun to have in decks and things like that. I think I think this is a positive change, right? I think this is a good card to promote, um, to make to make better, right? Like it it's uh it, yeah, I think this is a good a good card to buff. So um, yeah, I think that's a good change. I called it. That's I've been saying. Doom Keeper turn into a one two instead of a two one. That's that's a change that I had on my my ten cards to nerf. That was the one I called. Um, yeah, don't don't allow Dune Keeper to attack for four on round one. Uh, get rid of that. I think that's a that's a good change. All right, that that hurts Thresh Nasus and Aurelia Zir, um, but it's still Dune Keeper is very playable and it still has a lot of synergy with all sorts of different cards in the game and it's still very playable. You'll still we'll still be putting Dune Keepers as three ofs and lots and lots of decks. But I think that that is a good change. Whoa, I love it. Mountain Sojourners. Yes. You know, I like playing my Taric decks. I like playing my support decks. Um, you know, I now our, our my support decks are getting a little help. You know, we had Young Witch turning into the 1-2. I liked that. Mountain Sojourners, now a 4-5. Now makes this a much easier card to play because it's going to be trading with a lot more stuff. It's going to be a lot more difficult to block, um, everything like that. Uh, you know, now it's actually like killing things and everything when you block it. Yeah, I love this change. I love this change. You can't just throw like a 3-3 in front of the Mountain Sojourners and, and have it survive. 
I love it. Yeah, Mountain Sojourner is again another another positive card. Now we've had some really good change. We had the Howling Abyss change. That's the best one so far. But I really like the Young Witch, the Taric, the Mountain Sojourners changes. Those are all big time for me in the decks I really like to play. So I guess so, but that's we're out of Shadow Isles now and out of Sharima. So no change to Merciless Hunter. No change to Spectral Matron. Ugh, I don't like either of those. Um, Sun Guardian is a card that I've always felt is like sneaky good. It's just Targon is just such a good region that it's you know it hasn't really seen any play. But I've always felt that this card is sneaky good. I don't think it really needed this buff. Um, to be honest, I think this was a card that people just didn't realize how good it was. Maybe more people will realize how good it is once with this buff, but it's basically Darius. Um, you know, it, being like a, it was an 8-7 Overwhelm for 6 mana. Now it's an 8-8 eight, eight Overwhelm for 6 mana. It's, it's basically Darius. I think people don't... I don't think enough people play Sun Guardian realize how good that card is. Okay, star shaping nerf. I think that's good. I think that the Targon does, des like, the, the celestial part of Targons do deserve a little bit of nerfs. Um, and just all the Nexus healing. Targon has so much lifesteal in the regions. Um, you're still you're still going to be playing, you know, a whole bunch of star shapings and everything. But that's, you know, that's a little bit of a nerf. And that that's, I, I think that's good. I think you, you do want games to end, right? You don't want games to go on forever. And that's, that's one of, my, that's like my biggest problem with Targon Celestial decks is that they just ha make the games go forever and so you know you do want games to end and so i think that having uh reducing the amount of nexus healing that that region has is just a positive so i think that's a that's a good positive change from somebody who plays star shaping all the time and that's kind of stuff i think that's a good change <laughs> at first black magic's like oh man at first i had a heart attack i thought they were changing the mana cost from five to four <laughs> yeah you know what let's make star shaping better Whoa, that's a big change. Serpent, okay. Serpent going to just being a 1-1 now instead of a 2-1. That's a big change, right? Like that's, you know, because Serpent's frequently the card that you really want to hit with all your invoke stuff because it costs zero mana. So it's, it's a zero mana Mystic Shot. Now it's a zero mana Blade's Edge. Uh, that's a that's definitely a huge difference. So that's, that's going to be a, a hit to Celestials big time. Yeah, that's an interesting one. That's a that's a big change. This isn't the biggest change so far. Twin Disciplines, I think, will have the biggest effect. Um, but that's a big one. And the Fangs. Yeah, the Fangs hit, getting hit. So I think nerfing the Fangs to be a 2-2 and nerfing the Serpent to be a 1-1 certainly makes... Like, both of these make the Fangs a lot worse. And so I think this certainly pulls you towards... For your Targon decks, this pulls you towards playing Solari Sunforger being the 5-4 Lifesteal for four over the fangs right because like those two those two directly compete in the exact same slot and they're both very good but you kind of played the fangs more at least by you i mean me i i always kind of played the fangs more with getting like the celestial and everything but now i'm now i'm kind of feeling like i want to be playing solari sunforger more being a five four lifesteal for a round because it's just bigger it can block and Tar targon does kind of struggle with the larger units anyway so you, you do have value of having just a larger unit in play to just kind of help out helps slow the game down anyway and everything but now now with both of these nerfs you were looking more towards that and i think that's good i think that just you know like these these three cards you know like i'm playing three the fangs in every targon deck and i'm looking for serpent all the time and i'm playing three star shapings in every targon deck i i think that these nerfs are definitely warranted that, um, you know, let's, let's have some game, you know, let's not spend 30 minutes on every single game, right? <laughs> so I think that those are, are all uh, very fair nerf from, from somebody who played three Targon decks, I guess I didn't quite, but was basically playing three Targon decks in the last seasonal tournament and played just these cards all the time. I think that these are, these are good, healthy nerfs for the game. I guess that's what I mean. But that's it. That's it. So no merciless. I can't believe no merciless hunter change. That's the one that I I, I thought was a hundred. Like if you had to tell me name one card that for sure is going to change, I would have said merciless hunter. I can't believe no merciless hunter change. Lab of Legends. Let's go. Echo, Pike, Rexai, Swain, and Shivana. Five new champions for the Lab of Legends. Let's go. Best thing about 
everything. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm definitely happy that the Watcher changed. I kind of wish it was a little bit more. I kind of wish that there was something with Spectral Matron, right? So, like, Spectral Matron is probably... The whole Spectral Matron thing is the, the thing that I kind of wish would have changed. Um... So most all of these, I think, are good changes for the game. A couple of them I didn't love. Like, Nasus, I think, could have hit a little bit more. Like, so, like, like Thresh Nasus, what really changed about... Like, Thresh Nasus has been, like, top tech of the game for a long time. What really changed? Nasus just doesn't have Fearsome anymore on just level one. That really doesn't affect anything, to be honest. Like, that doesn't change this card hardly at all. Like... I don't know, like, what percentage of the games does this make, like, that you would have won with Thresh Nasus that... Or, like, how... Like, okay. Th whatever win rate you think that Thresh Nasus has, now that Nasus doesn't... Level 1 doesn't have Fearsome, what percent does that change the win rate? Maybe 1%, right? So, like, it doesn't change, like, it doesn't move the needle at all. Um, so you had that. So basically, the only change to the deck is the Curse Keeper, right? Is that the only one? Curse Keeper is now a four, a four two instead of a four three. The Escaped Abomination, and Doom Keeper. Doom Keeper is a one two. I I kind of feel like Thresh Nasus is still going to be the top deck. Like we saw how it, it was perfectly fine after the Atrocity and Blighted Caretaker changes, and I think both the Doom Keeper and the Escaped Abomination changes are good. But I think this is still going to be just a top deck in the format. And so I don't know if that's, you know, if, if we've wanted, if we've talked about how it's been a solved metagame for a long time, we want to shake things up. I don't know if we really affected that deck enough. Now, again, this, the, all of these things are just tons and tons of buffs everywhere, right? Like we're buffing up all sorts of cards and all sorts of champions and everything like that. So we're just increasing the power level of um, the entire game basically and just all sorts of champions are getting higher power level and all sorts of different support cards are getting higher power level so uh you know so there's that with um you know hurting thresh nasus because it didn't gain any uh for the most part so thrall i i i don't i'm a little scared of thralls i'm surprised that i'm really surprised lissandra didn't get changed at all obviously the watcher got changed a little bit but i'm really surprised that lissandra still is creating you know a million cards every single game I'm, I'm really surprised about that that it's still doing everything that it does that you know like you still have this absolutely free watcher to go along with the free uh thrall to go along with free ice shards to go along with free nexus uh tough for a three mana champion i'm i'm, I'm honestly surprised that, that wasn't nerfed at all no ribbon got buffed ribbon got buffed um the change for Riven was now uh, it makes the attack token when you it makes the it reforges whenever you summon Riven if you have the attack token. So so it's it's going to be a summon reforge more often now, and so that's that's a good change. So so there we go. That's that's uh that's step overall. Overall, very good, very good, right? Like we're gonna see tons and tons of changes, tons of updates. I think the the change I'm most surprised about, or no, how about the? I guess the one I was most surprised about was the stalking shadows. But the one that I think is gonna maybe have the biggest impact, honestly, is gonna be this twin disciplines. I think this twin disciplines change is gonna have a huge impact on the game, and you're gonna see twin disciplines everywhere. Um, we already had like Ionia Day the other day. I think Ionia is a very good region. I think this this change, I mean this help like lease this makes Lee Sin a ton better. This makes so many you know like Lee Sin, Yasuo, Lulu, all all the Ionia champions, but just using Ionia as basically these two together. Even the will of Ionia change is huge. Also, these two together, I think this is going to make Ionia pretty scary, and Ionia is going to turn into like one of the top regions. That's this is just my prediction. I think this is going to be a big buff into Ionia. These two cards. I think this is. I think people are going to be surprised at how good these are and how good Ionia is after these. But let's see what else we got. Well, yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm... What else we got? All right. So we get more more Lab Legends champions. Awesome. I need to keep on playing those, those champions and getting those through there. Oh, uh, let's see. There's... Um, more deck rewards. Okay, more prologues and stuff. We get some more road updates. All right, so some champion skins. We got Sandstorm Echo. So 
So the new champion Echo is already going to have a skin, sand, the Sandstorm skin, and Sandwrath Pike. So the brand new champions already get to go on the Lab of Legends, the brand new champions, and they already get skins. Poor Our, our poor old champions, they don't even get skins and everything. All right, our, the board. Whoa, that looks scary. So it looks like we got a pike board. We got some treasure. We got some teeth. Cool. We got a treasure chest. Gotta love treasure chests. The sunken shipyard. We got this pike card back. Doesn't this dude kind of look like Bane? Or is that just mean? We got this card back for the people. I don't know. I don't do a good Bane. Uh, we got, let's see, the Void Barrier. I think this is Rek'Sai. He got his cool card back. We have the new Bane emote, or Pike. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> and there's Echo. <laughs> Echo gets two emotes. Okay, and then they got the bundle. And some new stuff for expeditions. All right, bug fixes. We haven't always gone over these bug fixes, but they'll just like throw buffs into cards and, and just call it bug fixes. I don't know why they do it all the time. I don't know why they don't just, like these this whole bug fix stuff, like a lot of times they'll just like change like the wording of a card that should be up here, but they'll just like throw it in like, this random text down in the bug fixes. So this is definitely important. So let's figure out what they're doing here. All right, so fix the bug where players were unable to select a unit. Okay, well that that's actually a bug. Fix the bug where blah, blah, blah. Shadow shift should now summon a living shadow the correct combat slot, okay. Um, fix the bug where Tarek would infinitely copy Golden Age's rally effect on allies. No, I like doing that, but no, I mean, that was the thing. All right, Kyrian Sumpworkers transform ability should now affect Kyrian Sumpworks that have been discarded, are on the board, or have been killed. Okay, good. That's, it's supposed to do that. Casting iterative improvement on an enemy Kyrian Sumpworker should now create a Kyrian Sumpworker in hand. Isn't that what it does? What is... I, I feel like that's what it's supposed to do. So... I don't know why I wouldn't. Anyway, champion spells no longer appear as their unit cards in the action log. Okay, that's good. You know how like whenever you go to the action log and they like they played the Ezreal Mystic Shot and you go and check the action log and it shows like Ezreal killed, you know, this 2-2 and you're like, no, it was, it was the champion spell, Ezreal's Mystic Shot. So that actually is, so that's that's kind of good. All right, Chief Mechanist Zevi should no longer give herself fleeting when drawn from the player's deck. That's actually just a bug that was there that was really annoying, right? We we had that, like, we, we were playing Zevi the other day, and, like, whenever you drew, drew Zevi, it was just a fleeting Zevi in hand, and you're like, okay, well, that's a bug. Uh, fix an issue that caused players to incorrectly... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Rhyme Fang Wolf. Um, buff effect when killing... Okay. All right, so these are actually all... Um, those were actually all bugs. They weren't, like bug fixes that just buffed up champions because sometimes you you know we would definitely see that during that but wow crazy tons and tons of changes this that was like an hour long talking about all of these changes with patch 211 super exciting can't wait for tomorrow we're gonna have all those changes and we're gonna have the new champions and the new cards the lurker mechanic and echo and the new the new lurker champions all look really good it's gonna be exciting love it this is going to be exciting time playing Legends of Runeterra. All right, so those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button, leave those comments, let me know what you think of all the changes. Which changes do you really like? Which ones don't you like? What did you want to see? Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Love seeing those uh, comments and love discussing with y'all the uh, different changes here for patch 2.11. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.